بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف العبياء والمرسلين محمد وعاله الطيبين الطاهرين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاء سيد ومولى علي بن أبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد الحمد لله الذي حدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن حدانا الله أما بعد السلام عليكم and welcome to Future Stars on Hadai TV I'm your host Insha and today we're going to be because it's at the start and the beginning of Shaaban we're going to be talking about um, the, the month itself of Shaaban and the few uh, few already events that have already passed. Um, I'm going to be talking a, uh, a little bit about them as well and also to the future events to come in Shaban and uh, what we will actually be talking about in Shaban as well. So before I continue, I'd like to introduce my guest. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Misbah. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Mohsin. Uh, thank you for joining me on today's show. So before we do anything, um, as we do on every show, um, Mohsin, you're going to read the surah this time and Misbah, you're going to read the translation. So can we start them off with the loud salawat? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asr. Inna l-insal la fi khus. وإلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وثواثوا بالحق وثواثوا بالصبا. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. By time, indeed, mankind is at loss, except for those who have believed and have done righteous deeds and advise each other to truth and advise each other to patience. Salawat. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجم. Thank you for that. So that was Surah Asr, which we will I actually uh, might bring up at the join near to the end of the show uh, when I bring up uh, kind of an uh, important topic that we would be talking in future shows in Shaaban, especially in Shaaban because it is of the month, and um, we'll get into that later in today's show. So, what's the topic? Shaban. Shaban, yeah. So um, I mentioned this um, hadith, I think, last last week. Um, well, uh, so who's Shaban's mom? The Prophet. Prophet's mom, yeah. So uh, this, just think about it. this is the Prophet's month, yeah. And ha wh wh what did the Prophet came down as? The uh, Prophet came down as a, a guidance yeah. and mercy to mankind. And in the Quran, it called him Rahmatan lil alameen. A mercy to the world, yeah. So he came down as a rahmatan lil alameen, yeah. And this is his month. So think about the blessings and the um, and all these um, benefits that you'll get from this month, yeah. Because he is the mercy of the world, yeah. All right. So um, important thing, Shaaban. The few things that uh, Mosin and Mishra are going to be talking about now. So Mosin, you've got the first thing. So we can start Mosin off with the last salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. After Rajab al Maghrib, Shaban is Mosin is the second month of Ib Ibadah worship Ibadah. in order to make preparation for the grand and majestic month of Ramadan al mubrik the, al the, the month of fasting and forgiveness. Shaban al Mozam is, is a month of high excellence and is dedicated to the leader of the Prophets. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. He used to keep fast during this month and join it with the month of Ramadan al Mubarak. He used to say, "Shaban is a month dedicated to me. Whoever keeps one fast during my month will definitely go to heaven." Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil fajr. Thank you. So he mentioned some uh, background about Shaban as well. And Miss you're going to talk a little bit more. So I can start off with the loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam once said, When his eyes fell on the new moon of Shaban, the Messenger of Allah ordered somebody to declare the following to the people of Medina. O people of Yathrib, I am Allah's messenger to you all carrying this message. 
Verily, Shaban is my month, therefore may Allah have mercy upon him who helps me undertake my month. It has also been reported from Imam Jafar Sadiq salam, that on the commencement of the month of Shaban, Imam Zainal alayhi salam would gather his companions and address him. O oh my companions, do you know which month this is? It is a month of Shaban about which Prophet Muhammad wasalam, used to say that it is dedicated to him. So keep fast during this month in the love of your holy Prophet wasalam, and to attain closeness to your Creator. By Allah in, in though in whose hands is my soul, I have heard from my father Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam, that he heard from the commander of the faithful Imam Ali alayhi salam, that whoever keeps fast during the month of Shaban in the love of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and to attain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become a friend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on the day of judgment will be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his grace and paradise will be assured to him. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa al So thank you Ms. Um And then she mentioned some things that, that fasting in this month is really is a really um, kind of blessed thing to do in this month. Um, it's not obviously, it's not um, a thing that you have to do, but it's a, it's a really uh, good way of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, and um, if we can in, um, probably in Ramadan we're going to do this about a show dedicated to the benefits of fasting and what it can actually do to you. Yeah, because w- when you fast you have this kind of, um, kind of way to control yourself. Yeah, that it, it's, it's so hard to do any lies or do any, any of the sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbade for you. Yeah, it's, it, it becomes a bit more easier. Yeah, um, um, obviously that's my uh, personal experience and others as well uh, would feel this as well. But obviously, I, I believe that's the, one of the most important parts of fasting as well. Yeah, because it allows you to, t- to take control of yourself. Yeah. So, um, Mosin, you've got the next thing, so we can start Mosin off with the last salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This is a month of asking for forgiveness of sins, giving alums, charity and fasting. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam used to observe fast during the whole month. Imam Zain Allah Badin alayhi salam has said, Whoever is in love with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wishes to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and receive his bounties, favors and rewards in this world and in the hereafter must connect Shoban with Ramadan in the matter of fasting and special prayers. It is also reported from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam Whoever s- observed nine fasts in the in the whole month of Shaban should not fear the interrogation of Mun- Munka and Nakir. Whosoever observes twelve fasts in the month of Shaban, seventy thousand angels will descend over his uh, slash hers grave on his on the night of his burial. The night of the washer to remove his or her fearless and loneliness. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajahum. So, um, continuing there with um, how how much God is um, Allah subhanahu wa taala is blatantly putting in your face a way for you to repent. A way for you to get closer to him, yeah. He's putting putting these blessings after blessings in front of you, but a lot of people are not taking these chances and are taking advantage advantage of these things, yeah. And I hope um, hope people at home see this kind of um, things that they would be missing out on and will take part in these important things. So, Miss B- Miss, B- you've got the next thing. So, start Miss Wafid the last salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Keeping fast on Thursdays of the month of Shaban is also carried also carries great significance. It has been reported that the heavens are decorated each Thursday in the month of Shaban and the angels pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all those who fast on that day and their prayers are accepted. 
It is stated in the reports of the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that whoever fasts on Mondays and Thursdays of this month, Allah SWT will, will fulfill 20 of his worldly wishes and 20 of his wishes of the hereafter. It is recommended to give alms in, the month, in this month even if it is as small as a half date. Alms giving in this month brings about rescue from the hellfire. In this respect, it has been narrated that when Imam Jafar Sadiq Islam was asked about the merits of observing fasting in the Rajab al Murajab, he answered, Why do you not ask about the merits of observing fast in Shaban? What is then the reward of him who observes fasting on, on one day in and one day in Shaban sent a messenger of Allah, asked the narrator. Imam Jafar Sadiq Islam answered, The reward will be paradise, I swear by Allah SWT. The narrator then asked again, What are the best deeds that should be done in the month of Shaban? Imam Jafar Sadiq Islam answered, Alms giving and seeking forgiveness are the best deeds in Shaban al Mazum. Verily, if you if anyone of you gives alms in Shaban, Almighty Allah SWT will breed those alms in the very same way as you breed your small cam camels. Hence, these alms will be as huge as Mount Ohud on the day of resurrection. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa hajjil fajr. So thank you, Mr. So they we've talked a lot about of Shaban and it's kind of merits them and I even think we haven't even gotten fully into it yet yeah we haven't fully um, g gone gone through um, Shaban yeah and w um, because we got to go through uh, a few other topics in today's show so um, just looking at this um, of the month of Shaban when you do all these um, all, me all these acts all these ibadat, all these worships, yeah, and and you, you're doing it, but then in Shaban, what does it go? It goes to another level, yeah, and if you keep do if you keep doing this, you're on that level, yeah, in Shaban, yeah, you're getting even more benefits from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, mm -hmm. yeah. So why would you not be doing these things, yeah? If you truly, strongly believe in it, why wouldn't you? Yeah, so um, uh, these are things that we need to take control of ourselves, like we said. So, um, Shaban is a really important, um, important month, yeah, because it has majority of the birth of Ahlul Bayt in this month, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, this is really a blessed month, it has so, it has so many births in it, yeah, in, in this month, yeah, so, um. Um, we need to see how blessed this month is and take advantage of it uh, and and now we're gonna go on to the next next part yeah uh, which includes Shaban yeah so um, well, wh what you're gonna talk about next and we're gonna talk about the first and second first second and third of Shaban uh, uh, like uh, um, it's, um, if you want to talk about a little bit about the first, and then we'll go on to the other. Yeah. yeah so let's start most of the last salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. First, second, and third of Shaban. First, first day, mid Wednesday, and last third day of Shaban. Thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth of Shaban. Any third day, Friday, and Saturday of Shaban. The last three days of Shaban to connect with the holy month of Ramadan. As Asamma Ibn Zayd acquired, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I find you fasting in any month like you do during the month of Shaban. Prophet Muhammad wasallam, responded, That is the month of the people neglect. It, be, it comes between Rajab and Ramadan. It is a month in which the deeds are raised to the Lord of the world. I love that my deeds be raised while I am fasting. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajahum. So thank you Mohsin and talking there even more about the benefits of Shaban and why people should take advantage of this month and inshallah we'll have um, more shows dedicated on Shaban alone 
um, also include other topics as well if we can. So, um, so in this month of Shaban, we uh, we hope to um, get a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, information out about the month of Shaban and what happening inside this month and um, uh, so uh, important events in this month and um, what you could do in this month as well of Shaban like our malls um, and other things like that. So. Um, what are we going to talk about next? Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Yeah. So, um, um, so today is uh, Friday. Yeah. So people will see this um, on Saturday, which is tomorrow. Yeah. And on Saturday, it will be the birthday of uh, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Yeah. So we're going to be including Imam Zainul Abidin as well in this. And um, Friday today, it's what the birthday of. Uh, the birthday of Begins with A. Um, Imam Ali. No, uh, no, Abbas. Abbas. Yeah, Abbas. yeah. So it's um, it's the birth of Abbas as well. Yeah, and then um, just before that, so yesterday was the birth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Yeah. So um, we're going to be talking about these three, um, three personalities really quickly, really briefly. Yeah, and we're just going to mention a few things about them. Yeah, so um, starting off with Imam Hussein. So, Miss, for you got the first thing, so we can start, Miss, for the last of what? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Imam Hussein alayhi salam is our third Imam. He was well known for his kindness, charity, and love for the poor. One day, when Imam Hussein alayhi salam was riding through the streets of Medina, he came across some beggars who had gathered together to eat the food that they had begged for during the day. The beggars saw Imam Hussain Islam and invited him to join them. Imam Hussain Islam was not allowed to take anything given in charity, Sadaqah, as he was from the family of, Holy, of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sadaqah is forbidden haram for all the members of the family of Ahlul Bayt of the Holy Prophet Imam Hussain Islam got off his horse and sat down with the beggars. Imam Hussain Islam then explained to them that although he would love to eat with them, he could not because as a member of the family of the Holy Prophet, Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he could not take sadaqah. As an alternative, he invited all of the beggars to his house for food so that they could all eat together. Moral of the story, you should always be kind to others, especially the poor. You should not compromise your beliefs for anyone, but at the same time you should be polite in how you tell them. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So, Misbah, thank you for that. So, um, sharing a story about Imam Hussain alayhi salam, and I think mostly you're going to do uh, that as well. So, mostly you've got the next thing. So, we'll start mostly off with the love. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Our third Imam, Imam Hussein Islam, was a man of faith and action. During night, he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in privacy, while during the day, he worked hard and guided the people. He was constantly mindful of the poor and needy and used to visit them and cheer them up. He used to tell his followers, be always in touch with the needy, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not leave the arrogant. Imam Hussein salam, always helped the poor as much as he could. At night, he would carry sacks of food to the houses of the poor by, fol by following the footsteps of his father, Imam Ali salam, and leave them n near the doors. He worked hard to er eradicate po uh, poverty, establish justice, and acquaint, uh, acquaint the people with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During the time of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, a tyrant called Yazid ibn Mu'awiyah came, became the ruler. Yazid called himself the successor of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but this was a lie. He used to spend the income of Islamic will on, on drinking, gambling, and wild parties. Public wealth was wasted for supporting his regime, and rights of the poor were trampled upon. In this way, he totally scorned the instructions of Islam. 
When Yazid ibn Muawiyah became ruler of the Muslims, he immediately demanded Imam Hussein salam, to recognize him as the ruler and accept his leadership, give bayat. But Imam Hussein salam, was the true successor of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and could not accept the endorse the leader of the the, the leadership of the oppressor. Imam Hussein salam, began to enlighten and awaken the people about Yazid ibn al Muawiyah and exhausted them to de- dislocate from him. He would tell them, Do you not see that the truth is being trampled upon and falsehood of and oppression are be travelling? In such conditions, a Muslim must be ready for martyrdom in defence of the right. Martyrdom and self for sake of truth is victory and success, while life, the oppressors, is no more than shame and disgrace. At that time, the, the people of Kufa were loving followers of Imam Hussein salam, and who had been suffering at the hand of Yazid and his and his father Muawiyah. They invited they invited Imam Hussein salam, to Kufa to lead them against Yazid and his wicked rule. Imam Hussein salam, had indeed decided to rise up and fight and so he accepted the invitation and set off for Kufa. When Imam Hussein salam, and his followers were near Kufa, they met by Yazid's troops under the leadership of Hazrat Hur. The troops wanted to arrest Imam Hussein salam, and the followers and take them to Yazid. Imam Hussein salam, told them, Never will I accept disgrace and surrender to Yazid ibn al Muawiyah. Death for me is superior to grace. I am ready to defend Islam and Muslims until I get martyred. At a place called Kolbala, Imam Hussein salam, and helpers were surrounded by Yazid's troops. Imam Hussein salam, and his followers stood firm as they fought thousands of troops of Yazid. Finally, on the 10th of Muharram, 61 AH, the day we call Ashura, they were martyred. Imam Hussein salam, and his followers were martyred, but they did not submit to, to injustice and oppression. They defended Islam and the Muslims with their blood. They saved Islam and the Holy, the Holy Quran from danger in annihilation at hands of Yazid ibn al-Mu'awiyah. Imam Hussein salam, fought against oppression and def- defended the religion of Islam. And by doing so, he taught the world the greatest lesson on freedom and righteousness. For this reason, we call Imam Hussein as Sayyid al Shudda, which means Lord of the Martyrs. Now the turn has come for us to safeguard and defend Islam. We should. We, we must shoulder the magnificent responsibility. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you, Mohsin. So, um, Imam Hussein, a big, a big personality, and uh, which was born in the month of Shaban, yeah, and um, which we, uh, we also not only need to learn lessons about he, um, him at Karbala, yeah, in Muharram, but we learn about his life before that, yeah, in in Shaban, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, um, um, learning about how what happened at Karbala in Muharram, yeah, and then in Shaban, learn about his other life. Um, and miss the story that you said was really important when um, when he was following the rules of Islam and he how he helped those poor people, yeah, and he invited them into his house to eat, yeah. So um, the next we're gonna quickly go on to um, Abbas and um, Miss. I'm gonna let you quickly just um, say a little bit about Abbas. So. Um, the next, uh, Ms. Prasad, the next thing, so we we'll start Ms. Prasad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Hazrat Abbas was born at Medina on the 7th of Rajab, 1424, or the 4th of Shaban in 26 AH. Hazrat Abbas was born at Medina on the 7th of Rajab, or the 4th of Shaban in 26 AH. When the news of his birth reached Hazrat Ali, he prostrated himself on the ground as a token of his humble thanks to God. 
Imam Hussein took the baby in his arms and recited the Adhan and Nikama calls for prayers in his right and left ear respectively. Then the newborn baby opened his eyes to see the beloved face of Imam Hussein. On the seventh day of his birth, birth the ceremony of Akika, which is one of the emphasized sunnets, was performed, and Hazrat Ali named the child Abbas. And a similar incident took place at the time of, his, of the birth of Hazrat Ali. He only opened his eyes when the Holy Prophet took him in his arms. Abbas is upbringing. It was the desire of Hazrat Ali that, he, that this son, whom he named Abbas, meaning a dauntless lion, would accomplish the same deeds as a, of valor and who, and who would follow, follow his teachings without fear of life and death. It was also his wish that Abbas would be a constant companion of Imam Hussein and be his standard bearer at Karbala. Hazrat Ali, who himself was known as the Lion of God and the Gateway of Knowledge, brought up Hazrat Abbas and ably guarded him till he was 14 years old. The next 10 years were spent under the careful eye of Imam Hassan and the last 10 years with Imam Hussein. Thus, it was not surprising that Hazrat Abbas acquired near perfection in so many spheres of life. His gallantry, boldness, courageousness, outlook and the art of combat and soldierly were inherited from Hazrat Ali. And this he proved very well in the battles of Jamal, Sifin and Nur Hawan. Imam Hassan taught him patience and tolerance. His lion-hearted loyalty and self-sacrifice in nature were the results of his association with Imam Hussein and Junub e Zainab. Physically, mentally, morally and spiritually, he was fully developed besides being an accomplished scholar. He helped the poor and needy and discharged his duties toward his towards his fellow beings according to the precepts of Islam. He was pure in his thoughts, words and deeds. Lest any of these should displease God, he lived strictly in accordance with the teachings of the Holy Quran and the sayings of the Holy Prophet. Just as Ali was taught and trained by the Holy Prophet, so was Abbas taught, by, taught and trained by Hazrat Ali. Ali fully knew the mysteries of life and death, and Abbas had fully embibbed the true spirit of Islam. A man who was brought up, educated and trained by Hazrat Ali could on no account be attached to this worldly life nor fear death and Abbas fully justified this by his actions. Hazrat Abbas married Lubaba, daughter of Ubaidullah ibn Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib and had two sons, Fazl and Muhammad. Some sources say that Lubaba was present at the at Karbala and their son Muhammad was martyred there. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you, Misbah. And um, she's there talking about a really important person, Ali Abbas, and how he only opened his eyes to Imam Hussein, -Islam, similar to how the Imam Ali only opened his eyes to the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and how Abbas was tra trained by Imam Ali. -Islam. Yeah, an important, really important um, role model that people should be looking up to. So, um, Imam Zain al Abidin is le next. So, Miss, but could you just quickly um, do like um, maybe an introduc uh, the introduction of Imam Zain al Abidin al Islam? So, come start, Miss Rafid al Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. It is recounted by one narrator that one night I was performing circumambulation tawaf around the Holy Kaaba in Mecca. I saw a young man who had caught the cover of the Holy Kaaba in his hands and was crying. He was beseeching Allah SWT saying, O Lord of the Universe, the eyes of all people of the world have closed for sleep. The sun has set and the stars have appeared in the sky. But you, O Master of the Universe, you are always awake, alive and are the only perm permanence and you are controlling the world and its inhabitants. O Lord of all beings, the rulers have shut firm their gates and have assigned watchmen over them, but the door to your house. O dear Lord is always open to all and you are always ready to relieve the, dis the distressed, cure the sick and help the oppressed. O Masvil Allah SWT, O creation's beloved, this helpless creature has come to your house this dark night, perhaps you will favour him. O Allah SWT, who you who you who answer the call of the helpless in the darkness of night. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you who rescue the distress from their difficulties. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you who aid your creatures when they are in distress. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you who call, cure those in pain. O oh Lord, oh Lord, your guests are asleep around your house, but you, O oh adored Lord, are the only one who has no sleep. 
You are he who is controlling the world and all its creatures. O oh Lord, I have come to your house this dark, and I am calling on you, for, uh, for, your, for you yourself have told us to call on you. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I implore you by this holy house to have mercy on your servant. O oh Lord, if, you, if your creatures don't come to your house and place their hopes in you, to those house will they go in and whom will they place their hopes? I became very joyful, joyful, the narrator continued, listening to the young man imploring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from witnessing his devotion to him, I went closer to see who the young man was. I saw that it was the fourth Imam, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, and I realized that only he could beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Thank you, Ms. But so, um, a narration about Imam um, Zain al Abidin alayhi salam actually how he used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's a whole book um Sahifa Sajjadiya yeah a, a, um, and it's been called the the Psalms of Islam because of how 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 um really how much du'as are in there and how how you actually speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah in your du'as in your prayers yeah and it's a really important book which we should actually be going over yeah and which we should hopefully go over as well so um so we mentioned a lot of personalities in today's show and we mentioned a lot of the benefits of Shaban yeah which people need to know about uh, which people need to know about so they take advantage and um, throughout the month of Shaban we need to be uh, remembering these personalities in this month so we can get closer to them and get and then finally learn from it and then get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by following um, like Ms. Uh, was saying fasting really important in this month yeah really really an important thing yeah because the holy prophet would used to fast 30 days even though it's not wajib in this month yeah so um, so um, a, a Ramadan is a wajib thing yeah when you become um, when you become balik, it's a wajib thing. You have to do it, yeah. But you're saying to Allah, "Oh, I don't have to do this thing, but I'm still doing it for you. Mm -hmm. I still want to do it for you, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I still want to do this. This is what message you're giving to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when you're doing these things, yeah. So um, also a really important uh, event uh, happening this month that we have every single year is the 15th of Shaban, obviously. Any of you know what the 15th of Shaban is? is? 15th of Shaban. Uh, yeah. yeah. A birth of Imam Mahdi. Alayhi salam. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be, um, inshallah, doing a big program on that. Yeah. And um, when we think of Imam um, Imam um, Mahdi, yeah, and uh, we think about what are we doing uh, as his uh, ummah. Yeah, what we're we doing as Muslims collectively, trying to prepare for the reappearance of our Imam. Yeah, and while he's not here, trying to um, trying to establish this Islam. Yeah, and uh, uh, people uh, many days nowadays are really focused on the signs of the reappearance of the Imam. Yeah, they wanna, um, and then they will start worrying about the Imam. Only then will they start thinking about the Imam when they see these signs, because there's people who are who probably are just waiting for these signs to happen, and they're not and they're not doing anything till these signs are happen. They don't want to do anything till these signs happen. They're waiting for the Sufiani, they're waiting for the Yamani, they're waiting for the Khurasani. Yeah, they're waiting for all these signs. Yeah, and um, they're not thinking about what can I what can I do now? Yeah. So going back to the surah that Moses mentioned in the beginning. Allah, uh, Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal asr, inna al-insana la fi khusr, inna al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. So he says, wal asr, by, by time. 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 So Allah is swearing by time. Yeah? What did he say? Um, what, um, what asr? Inna al-insana la fi khusr. What does that mean? Um, it means, uh, um, uh, indeed, indeed, uh, uh, indeed, mankind is in loss. Yeah. Inna linsana la fi khus. Indeed, mankind is in loss. So he swear. He said, by time, wal asr. Inna linsana la fi khus. So by time, mankind is lost. In, in loss. So he's saying. So you, you could suggest from this, 
it, as your interpretation or um, as I, I, I believe is to be a really um, important thing for us Muslims nowadays to think about yeah that Allah is swearing by time he's saying time is the thing that puts mankind at loss yeah because they don't think about time fully yeah mm -hmm. and then they're always losing time yeah we think now um, uh, definitely when you get older how quick time goes how fast time goes yeah so Allah is saying Wal asr, yeah he's swearing by time he says mankind is in loss yeah and what's, uh, what, what's the next ayah Misbah? Um, so, so what did that mean? Except for those who have believed and had, and had done righteous deeds and had advised each other to truth and advised each other to patience. So, except the people who believe. Who have believed. Believe and what? And done righteous deeds. Righteous deeds. And advise each other to truth and advise each other to patience. So these four things will help, yeah, us as Muslims to do um, to to actually not be in this loss that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking about, yeah. So he, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying time is a really important thing. If we're not using this time to prepare for the reappearance of our Imam and to think what what could we do before the reappearance of our Imam. Which is inshallah, which we will talk about in future shows in Shaaban, especially on the fifteenth. Yeah, we need to think, start thinking about these things. Yeah, so remember, wal asr, inna linsana la fi khus. Yeah, mankind is at loss. Yeah, because of of we are not thinking straight because we are not um, we are not seeing how fast time is going in front mm -hmm. of us. Yeah. So we need to, inshallah, people at home got the message from that and uh, we need to just um, really concentrate in this month of Sha'aban and try to improve ourselves like we should be doing every month. We need to set ourselves goals to improve better than the month that you did before. Yeah. So hope you enjoyed today's show. Hope you've learned a lot from today's show. Hope you can implement what you learned in today's show as well. So um, we'll see you next week, same time, same place on Hadai TV. But until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.